Engineers said building here was impossible. They called it the forbidden zone for railway construction. But China is carving a railway straight through the Himalayas anyway, where oxygen is scarce, the ground reaches 90 degrees Celsius or 192 degrees Fahrenheit, and earthquakes happen daily. The Sichuan-Tibet Railway will stretch 1,629 kilometers, 1,012 miles, roughly the distance from New York to Miami, with a $45 billion price tag. And here's the staggering part. Over 90% will be tunnels and bridges, including one tunnel alone that runs 26 miles under unstable mountains. By 2030, many engineers say this could be the most difficult railway project in human history. In this video, we're diving into exactly how they're pulling off what was supposed to be impossible. Let's get right into it. This mega project connects Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan province, to Lhasa, Tibet's cultural and political center. Right now, travel between the two can take 48 to 72 hours by road. When the railway is complete, that journey will drop to just 13 hours. It's not just about convenience. This railway is part of China's broader high-speed rail strategy, linking remote regions to the national network and pulling them closer to the country's economic core. But at more than $45 billion, it's also a reminder of the enormous stakes. By comparison, Britain's HS2 project is now expected to cost over $125 billion for just 320 kilometers, 200 miles of track. And California's high-speed rail project? Years behind schedule, billions already spent, with no full line in sight. By contrast, China is forcing a line through some of the most dangerous mountains on Earth. To pull this off, engineers split the project into three phases. Phase one, the 140 km Chengdu Yan section, opened in December 2018, relatively straightforward, built across Sichuan's gentler terrain. Phase two, the 435 km Ningqi Lhasa section, completed in June 2021. This part alone required 47 tunnels and 121 bridges. Travel time dropped from 5 hours to 3.5. Phase 3, the final stretch from Yan to Ningqi, 1,011 kilometers, 627 miles. Construction began in 2020 and is set to finish by 2030. This last phase is the most brutal. 94.8% of it is bridges and tunnels. That's 838 kilometers underground and 120 kilometers on bridges. Among them is the centerpiece, the Yigong Tunnel. At 42.5 kilometers, 26.4 miles, the Yigong Tunnel will be one of the longest railway tunnels in the world. To build it, workers descend 1,200 meters, 3,937 feet beneath mountain peaks into unstable rock formations. Inside, the challenges are extreme. Ground temperatures can soar to 89 degrees Celsius, 192 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to disable machinery. Oxygen levels are just 40% of sea level, meaning workers get sick within two hours. Many report chest pain, nausea, and fainting. The solution? Industrial cooling with fans and ice, specialized breathing equipment, and rotating shifts. More than 70% of workers experience symptoms, but the tunnel continues inching forward. And Yi Gong isn't alone. There are nine more super long tunnels, over 10 kilometers each, including the Sejila Mountain Tunnel, 38 kilometers, and the Duo Muj Tunnel, 36 kilometers. Each one would be a headline project on its own. Building here isn't just about digging holes, it's about inventing new methods on the fly. China has deployed custom-designed tunnel boring machines that can withstand heat, high stress, and unstable geology. Normal TBMs would fail quickly, so engineers modified them with reinforced cooling systems, seismic sensors, and pressure control drills. In many places, machines alone can't do the job. Crews switched to drill and blast techniques, combining dynamite with GPS guidance to carve through unpredictable rock layers. Supplying these sites is its own megaproject. Roads had to be cut through valleys just to bring in fuel, food and oxygen tanks. 
Remote construction camps need medical posts, power stations and cooling units. Refrigerated trucks literally deliver blocks of ice to keep tunnel chambers safe for both workers and machines. Coordinating this vast system is a digital command center. Using AI, engineers track ground stress, temperature and seismic activity in real time. If a rock burst risk rises, work halts instantly. If oxygen levels fall, alerts go out across the site. It's construction on the edge of human limits, managed as much by data as by manpower. The Sichuan-Tibet Railway is setting records across the board. 72 tunnels totaling 851 kilometers. That's longer than the entire London underground. 121 bridges, including crossings over the Yalong Sangpo River, one of Asia's most powerful rivers, 16 times. Elevation differences of 5,000 meters, 16,400 feet, with an average operating altitude of 3,800 meters. More than 40 active fault lines crossed, more than any railway project in history. For context, the Gothard Base Tunnel in Switzerland, the world's longest completed railway tunnel, runs 57 kilometers, 35 miles. The Sichuan-Tibet line will feature multiple tunnels in that same league. To understand how bold this is, stack it against other headline projects. Switzerland's Gothard Base Tunnel is extraordinary, but it was built at moderate altitude in stable geology. Japan's Maglev Line, budgeted at $64 billion, will set speed records, yet it doesn't cross dozens of fault lines. India's Konkan Railway transformed its west coast with 92 tunnels and 2,000 bridges, but at lower elevation and shorter length. The Sichuan-Tibet Railway combines all of these challenges at once. Length rivaling Europe's best, complexity beyond India's most difficult, and altitudes no train has ever operated on consistently. That combination puts it in a category of its own. For workers, this is a fight against nature itself. Deep tunnels risk sudden rock bursts, violent explosions of compressed rock that can destroy equipment in seconds. Crews work short shifts, rotating constantly between the surfaced and high-altitude chambers. For passengers, the trains will feature pressurized cabins like airplanes, ensuring comfort and safety at elevations above 3,000 meters, 9,800 feet. Without them, altitude sickness would be inevitable. This isn't just a railway. It's proof that even rail travel can require aerospace technology. So why attempt such a dangerous, expensive project? Military. China can move troops and heavy equipment into Tibet in less than 12 hours, a trip that used to take a week. Economic, Tibet's mineral resources and tourism potential suddenly become far more accessible. Cultural, for Beijing, the line is also about integration, making Tibet feel less isolated from the rest of China. And here's where comparisons matter again. The $45 billion Sichuan-Tibet railway will deliver over 1,000 miles of track, Britain's HS2 is more than double the cost for a fraction of the distance. California's high-speed rail, decades late, still unfinished. This isn't just engineering, it's political will cast in steel. But at what cost? Critics warn of ecological damage. The line cuts through permafrost and fragile mountain ecosystems already under strain from climate change. Disruption here could alter water systems and wildlife habitats permanently. There are also cultural concerns. Greater connectivity may bring economic benefits, but it risks diluting Tibetan traditions, languages and ways of life. And geopolitically, the railway doesn't stop at Tibet. Plans exist to extend it into Nepal, toward Kathmandu and even Lumbini, the birthplace of the Buddha. That prospect has already stirred anxiety in India, wary of growing Chinese influence along its border. By 2030, the full line from Chengdu to Lhasa should be complete. Travel times will drop from days to hours, shrinking one of the harshest frontiers on Earth into a single overnight ride. Beyond Tibet, extensions into Nepal could reshape trade across South Asia, tying the Himalayas into the Belt and Road Initiative. 
If China succeeds, it shows that no obstacle is absolute. Not altitude, not earthquakes, not even the Himalayas. The Sichuan-Tibet Railway is more than just transport. It's a statement of philosophy that mountains can be pierced, climates adapted to and fault lines crossed. It asks a bigger question. How far should humanity go in reshaping the planet? Because if China can build this, it suggests that even the world's highest mountains no longer set the limits of what we can achieve. If you enjoyed this look at one of the world's toughest mega projects, don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more mega build stories.